Right, we're on. Well, hello everyone. This is Zoe Routh. I am a leadership expert based here in Canberra, but accessible to the world through the wonderful technology that we have available to us. This is the Future of Leadership webcast session, originally scheduled for live face-to-face -face in Brisbane. This is the next best thing. So if you're meeting me for the first time, hello. Uh, my accent is Canadian, so I was imported 24 years ago and I still sound a bit funny, but I want to tell you one thing about Canadians that you uh, may not know about in the coronavirus is that Canadians have been long prepared for a situation like this and they have had a strategic reserve of maple syrup for years. <laughs> so they had enough foresight uh, to stock up on maple syrup because when the, all the world is scrambling for toilet paper, well, we have maple syrup good on us. Too bad we didn't think about hand sanitizer. A um, couple other things, so getting set up, notepad and pen and paper, so we're going to take lots of notes hopefully. My original intention in this session was to do this live to give you a sampling of the Amplifiers program and then invite you to join the Amplifiers program. Well, given what's happening around the world, that doesn't seem like such a great idea, it just feels wrong. So there's no big sales pitch today about Amplifiers program. There is, however, an opportunity for you if you want to talk about the program and you have the space, the money, the time to think about joining, then we can talk about that offline, special invitation, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in fact, I'm opening up my calendar for people to have a chat, regardless whether it's about amplifiers or whether it's about what's happening in your team or what's happening, how you're thinking about how you manage your culture through this time. I'm available as a resource to my clients, and that includes you, even though we're just meeting some of us for the first time. Uh, I'm in service. My business is going to be fine. We've got six months all planned out and we're all good. Um, not every business is that. And I am here to serve my clients. And a lot of people are going through really tough times right now, making tough decisions about their staffing, making tough decisions about, well, everything really. So anyway, so I just wanted to mention that, that it's a bit of a change of intention for the webcast. We will take a deep dive into the future of leadership. And if you've got the headspace and heart space for that, I'm so grateful for you to be here because we need leaders to be thinking about this. So once we get through the emergency part of how do we actually get people working from home, how do they actually manage their workload, how do they actually get stuff done, once we get through that, then we're going to start to be looking at what's next in terms of leadership. So I'm going to share my slides now. And uh, you should still be able to see me. And the slide should come up here and there we go. All right, let me just make sure I can see your chat box. So if you have any questions as we go along, that's all there. Okay. Bruce Vegas, yes, hello everybody from lovely Bruce Vegas, or wherever it is you're calling in from. It might be your lounge room or your kitchen table. It's <laughs> just awesome. Okay. Now this is when my, here we go. That's where we know. So this is where I wanted to finish. If we were meeting in person, we're not doing this. Um, we are going to talk to me one-on-one -on -one if you want to. So what I'm going to do is put in the chat box um, a link where you can get into my calendar if you want to book a one-on-one. -on -one. I've got 30 minutes available over the next couple of weeks for anybody who wants to have a chat, as I mentioned. So that's where we're going to finish. The link is in there now if you want to hop on and book a session. And that's totally cool. Okay. So about, about me, this is me on the Lara Pinta Trail, oh, an extraordinary part of the world is out of Alice Springs. Uh, I am a leadership expert and I started my journey in leadership in Canada when I started leading canoe trips at the age of 17. And I did that outdoor experiential work for 20 odd years, first in Canada and then here in Australia with Outward Bound. And through that journey, I learned a lot about people and I learned a lot about leadership, the hands-on leadership stuff, you know, how you get a team to actually do things together and overcome personality differences and overcome problem solving. Um, I worked for five years at the Australian Rural Leadership Foundation, which was a privilege and a wonderful experience to meet and work with so many different industries in so many beautiful parts of this world, of this country. And I've been running my own leadership development um, business since 2002, mostly part-time and full-time for the last seven years. And I have clients all over the place. This is some of them uh, in all sorts of different markets and industries. So anything from agriculture through to IT, through to uh, different 
organizations in the university sector through to not-for-profits and so on. So that's a little bit of where I'm coming from and who I work with. So your takeaways for this session, this is what I want you to walk away with. Three critical shifts you need to make in the future of leadership. Key skills you might want to develop if you haven't developed them already. And to remind you that you are not alone, even though it can feel like that if you're staring day after day at the same four walls or small space, which is kind of what we've got. Uh, yeah, awesome. So Fiona's dialing in from her study in Brisbane. <laughs> you actually have a study, that's good. I'm sharing at the moment with my husband. Um, there's the two of us here. He's, I've kicked him out. He's up at the kitchen table and I'm down in the office where I could use my standing desk. Okay. So I want to talk about this idea of what we're going through right now. Cause I think understanding our context is really going to shape this idea of what is the future of leadership or what we should be focusing on, on the future of leadership. This is a chrysalis of a, what kind of moth is it? Um, it is a common, oh damn, I didn't write it down. Caterpillar moth? No, anyway, it's a type of moth. Uh, it's actually a Queensland moth, and this is the chrysalis stage. You would actually see, you can sort of see that there's some wings in there. And I like this idea of us going into a cocoon. Um, some people have talked about, you know, needing to hibernate. In fact, one outward band where I used to work here in Australia has said they're going into hibernation, which means they have no business, they have no clients, they're going back to bare basics to just keep things ticking along. And the idea of hibernation, I think, is the wrong metaphor and the wrong concept to think about what we're doing. Because in hibernation, a bear, say for example, goes into a cave and goes to sleep and uses up all his body fat uh, to come out in the spring to munch and see the world again. So it's kind of waiting for reset back to normal. And in what we're going through right now, there is no, going to be no reset back to normal. There is going to be a new normal. And as leaders, we need to help shape and craft that and respond to that. So going into hibernation is the wrong idea to think about this from a leadership point of view. I think the idea of transformation through a metamorphosis, which is essentially what happens when a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, a chrysalis, and then emerges as a butterfly, it's a transformation. And with a little bit of research about this idea, it's, I'm not sure how much you know about caterpillars. I kind of vaguely remember this as a kid. You have a caterpillar grows out from an egg, chomps away at all these leaves, gets super fat, finds a twig, spins a cocoon of silk around itself. So it's got this little shell around it, spun from its own uh, resources. And then it releases an enzyme that dissolves its body, which is really, really cool, like gross and cool. So you have this like caterpillar soup. And in it, there are, in this soup, it's not just soup, there's imaginal disks. There is these little blueprints, these little templates for what will emerge as a butterfly. So it's little templates for wings and little templates for eyes and little templates for feet, all sort of there. And as it goes through this process, the butterfly starts to come through and eventually cracks out of the cocoon and off into the world. And I like this as a metaphor for what we're going through. At the moment, we've all collectively around the world starting to cocoon. We're wrapping ourselves up with what we can around our businesses, around our homes, around our families, around our health. And we're just going into this stasis, if you like, where everything sort of just slows down. And through this process, we're going to be releasing our own set of enzymes to create something new. And this is really what the future of leadership is all about. We're going to be dissolving old things and focusing on what we can create in the new. And there'll be little templates of what we can take with us from the old and create into the new. So this is all metaphorical at the moment. We will get practical. Um, I want to introduce you to a colleague of mine, Brent Hodgson. He's a marketing expert, and he's been following the pandemic situation since October and November, whenever the first case got reported in Wuhan. And he's been ahead of the curve in terms of predicting a whole bunch of stuff. And he sent out this wonderful email yesterday, and I wanted to share it because I think it also sets the scene for what kinds of things we need to be thinking about in the big picture of the future of leadership. He says, values are shifting. Essential workers aren't bankers, politicians, and business leaders. They're nurses, truck divers, and shelf stackers. 
Out of all this, there is a rethinking of the core ideas that sit at the foundation of our society. That's huge. And this is the future of leadership. This is the work we will be doing. Some of the things we need to be looking at are how we feed, clothe, shelter, and look after the people who suffer bad luck through no fault of their own. What a fair go means and what happens if the go is good, but the circumstances are unfair. How we look after those who are less strong and less wealthy and less resilient. The nature of privilege and security and what insecurity and exclusion means in tangible terms. The nature of risk, reward, and responsibility in business. I think that's a huge one from a leadership point of view. The extent to which one person can take personal responsibility. The fairness of certain types of contracts. The interconnectedness of the economy and how everyone relies on everyone for everything, not just poor people relying on rich people to provide capital and be job creators. Now, I think that one is really important. And I think it's really hit home through this pandemic, how much we are relying on everybody to do their little bit and how the coffee that we buy from the takeaway shop helps support different leaders. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn's put her video on. Nice to see you. And everything that we can do right now, the little bits that we, if we have the resources available to keep the world flowing is, is really, really important. The littlest things matter a lot. So it's one of the reasons why I'm going to pay $18 a week to, for my gym membership to keep doing the online classes that are now starting to offer. Because that little bit is going to help them in the long run. It's going to help keep the energy flowing through our interconnected system. So whatever we can do, and I'm, I appreciate that not everybody's in the place to do that. Not everybody, some people have lost both jobs in their household and are finding it difficult to get to any resources. So I appreciate that not everybody has the resources to do that and where we can, we should, and, and should think about that. Uh, he says, even simple stuff like what we value in life, what makes us truly happy and what self care means. Just ask someone in home isolation about walks outside friends, family and sunlight. Now here's the really important part about, well, all that's important. And this is particularly important. It said the enemy of great is the good. And we've lived very good lives in a very good society for such a long time that it's been difficult to consider changing anything to make the world greater. The current situation is proving this catalyst. And it's so true, right? So we knew that uh, climate change was something that would, to deal with that was really important. And things were good, but to tackle climate change would mean hurting economy. There was gonna be a lot of things at stake if we did that. And now we're being propelled into that because we've decided that looking after our health and the fragility of human life is actually worth the consequences of what we're doing. Uh, so it's catalyzing and causing us to rethink a lot of these things. So how can we as leaders think about, instead of making just a good society, a good business, how can we make great society, great business and great interconnections? One of the most important things is how we look at things. And this is Marcel Proust. And this, I just love this quote. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Having new eyes. It's one of the core premises of my new book, People Stuff, which I just sent the first draft off to the editor. Thank goodness I've been working on this thing since May. The whole idea of perspective is one of the fundamentals when it comes to shaping the future of leadership. How we see and how we be is gonna be critical. So we're gonna cover off some of that today. So how are we looking at things is incredibly important for the future of leadership. Phew. Now, before I go on to the next piece, just checking in with you, what burning questions, you may or may not have burning questions about the future of leadership you would like to get answered. I just want to double check that I'm answering what questions you might have, or if I don't, I can actually reach into my research and my thinking for you. So what questions do you have about the future of leadership? And it could be more immediate things like how, what do I need to focus on to get me through the next six months? Or it could be a longer spanning thing. Like how, what does this mean in terms of structure of infrastructure or technology or communications or, and so on? So let me know in the chat box what questions you might have about the future of leadership. In the meantime, here's a way to look with new eyes. <laughs> I was Googling images for eyes and this is what came up and I thought, 
yeah, how good is it to put a picture of dogs into a presentation? Because animals are going to help us get through this next stage of our, chrysal our cocooning and our chrysal chrysalizing. And because they don't really know what's going on and don't really care, and it reminds us that life is still going on. So every morning I go out and have a look at my chickens and they're still pecking away. And yeah, life will go on no matter what happens in our economy and through this pandemic. Okay. No questions so far about the future of leadership. So we'll move on to this context. And many of you would have come across the acronym VUCA and I've added in one extra letter E for exponential. So if you're not familiar with this, these, this is the context in which we find ourselves as leaders. We are in exponential times and the pandemic is a wonderful, wonderful. The pandemic is an example of exponentiality. In pandemic terms, it means how quickly or in how many days does the rate of infections or reported cases double? Uh, and you can see like on, in Campersay, for example, two weeks ago, we had one case. Now we are up to over 70 in two weeks. So that's doubling, more than doubling every couple of days. So in a very short time frame, you go from one case to 72. And it's how we've gone from 100 cases in Australia to over 4,000 in the space of two weeks. That's why getting everybody to stay at home is so important. This is the exponential thing. What's important to know about this from a leadership point of view, well, there's a couple of things. Um, one of the important things to know about this is that the human brain has not evolved to cope with exponential situations. Our human brain is designed to, and has worked really well in linear situations, linear, which means immediate goals, immediately obvious uh, activities are what our brain is structured for. Get up, hunt for the day, eat for the day, carry on. And that whole sense of predictability it was what our brain has been used to for 100,000 years and more. This exponential situation is a recent event in our history. And it's applying not only to pandemics, it's applying to technology, that rate and pace of change. So what this means for us is that as we look at these situations, our brains, has, our brains have a really hard time comprehending this exponentiality. And it goes into panic mode. So we have an amygdala hijack, our amygdala threat bursts onto the scene, floods our system with epinephrine, epinephrine, I think that's how you pronounce it, and which is a stress drug, which if we see things as a challenge and an opportunity, it's good. It helps us be creative and focused. If we see it as a threat, which is largely how people are seeing of the exponential nature of the pandemic, say, for example, we go into fight, flight, or freeze, which is a very dysfunctional way of experiencing the situation because we're in survival mode and we get blinkered in our vision, our short-term memory snaps, we have a hard time focusing, and we find ourselves wandering around and around eating corn chips with peanut butter and jam. Or maybe that's just me. So the exponential nature of where we find ourselves is really, really powerful and important thing to, to manage. And so our deep self-management from a future leadership point of view is going to be really critical. Volatility. <laughs> Volatility means one thing is one way one day, one thing and becomes another thing the next day. Things are just chaotic in some ways. Uncertainty is the big thing that everyone is struggling with. The big question of when will it be over? When can we go out again? What does this mean for us? No one has answers for this right now. We've got potential suggestions. We've got frameworks and timelines, but there is no definitive. You just need to make it through to December. There's none of that. And that, again, triggers the amygdala and puts us into unhelpful states of being. So the future of leadership is about very much about managing ourselves and our teams around us to help take some of the uncertainty out and help calm the nerves, calm the horses if you like. Otherwise, we won't be able to problem solve our way out of this because we'll be in too much in survival mode. Complexity, we've seen by the interconnection of all of our systems from supply to uh, agriculture to uh, to businesses, to economies, to politics, and globally around the world, how connected and interconnected and complex things are. And things are ambiguous. <laughs> so this is our situation, hurrah. Uh, it is no longer the linear context in which we found ourselves 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And that means we've got to lead in a very different way. Okay, so some of the things 
are, that are not changing. Uh, human biochemistry is not changing that quickly, regardless of all the biotech that we have out there. So the fact that we've got to manage ourselves and our people through this biochemical equipment that we've had for 100,000 years, that's not quite geared up for our current context, is one of the challenges that we need to be mindful. The other thing that's not changing is the need for good leadership. In fact, great leadership. What people are looking for is some certainty in the face of uncertainty. And it's one of our roles as leaders is to provide that. How do we do that when we don't have the answers? We start by communicating what we do know and what we don't know. And saying what we don't know is actually really important. It helps fills the gap of assumptions that people have. Okay, so I want to show you this. In this model, we can see the vertical axis is the avuka context in which we find ourselves, and the horizontal axis is perspective and skill of the leader. At the origin, before things got avuka-like, <laughs> we are an anticipator. So we're excited to do leadership, and we can see our focus is linear and contained. We might have three to six months goals. We have uh, some things that we can look forward to that we can manage discreetly, kind of like new leaders. As we develop our skills and perspective, we get to manage a team, an organization, and we achieve results. And the Avuka landscape is still somewhat stable. Now, we are at a tipping point right here, right now. If we continue to do leadership from an achiever perspective, which is set medium to short term goals, uh, have a plan, execute that plan, we're going to fall off the edge and it become faders. Uh, we're going to fade out of existence. So businesses that are leading through an achiever mindset, an achiever skill level, are going to struggle. So what we want to move to is to be an amplifier. Now, an amplifier compared to an achiever, an amplifier navigates complexity. Uh, they can handle ambiguity. They can handle paradox. So these are some of the important aspects of the future of leadership that we need to contend with. Um, there's three critical shifts that we need to be mindful of, or that we need to hone if we're going to go from achiever to amplifier and avoid being a fader and fading out. It's really, really important. So there's a juggernaut here. So we're going to look at these. The first one is to expand your perspective. How wide and big and far and deep and broad can you go in terms of your thinking? So give me an example. So zooming out is, is the skill of, of sense-making. So sense-making is a really important leadership skill that we need to do. That means being able to zoom out and look as big a picture as possible. So some of the future skills are required to do this. So it's looking globally about, at what are the trends that are affecting uh, or could affect the business, economic, political context. So being able to do environmental scanning is one of the critical aspects of that. Um, Oh, let me just think here. Uh, I think one of the key phrases that we want to keep in mind when we go to expanding our perspective is that we can't take care of our family until we take care of the world. This is a paradox that is really challenging because it taps into, well, who am I to take care of the world? Like I'm powerless within this context. And as a leader, what we need to think of, we can't take care of the world all on our own. We can take care of the world in terms of our perspective. So when we think about the interconnectivity of things, like I said, going out to get a takeaway coffee is a local choice that has ripple effects. So the ripple effect concept is, and imagining how far those ripples go is one of the critical aspects of this. So expanding your sphere of concern is really important. It's not just about you, your family, your business, and Make no mistake, you absolutely need to focus on that right now. Make sure that you, your family, your friends, your business are stable and as much as you can. So immediate concerns are important, but it's not this or that, it's this and that. And this is one of the critical uh, conceptual things that we need to master for the future leadership to be working effectively. Um, so zooming out is, is really important. And um, this sense-making thing is, I like to think about it as, as the Vikings used to do. <laughs> we need to use all of our senses. I love the Vikings, that show, by the way. It's awesome. The Vikings, before there were maps of the world, had to navigate using their senses. There's no one saying, go here, go here, do this, do that. 
uh, find this coordinate. That there was no such thing. There was just the open ocean with unknown waters. So they started to plot and navigate and develop their own internal maps of the, of the landscape in which they found by using their senses. What could they see on the horizon? Were there birds um, coming? What was happening with the cloud situation? What were the waves doing as they hit the boat? Because waves, if they rebounded off land, it would hit the boat in a different way than if there was no land. They used their sense of smell. Uh, what could they smell fresh water? Could they smell the foliage off, the, off land? Um, they used their sense of taste. They set a plumb bomb down to the water, hit the ground and pulled up some water and they could taste whether it was fresh water or salt water. If there was fresh water, they knew there was land nearby allowing for the outflow of fresh water. So being able to use all of our senses is part of the sense making skill that we need to use as leaders. So are we just going around smelling things? No. The idea is take, taking note of what are the signals, what are the patterns, what are the systems that we need to map. It's advanced leadership skills, and this is exactly what we need. Um, a couple of places, if you want to think about, if you want a little bit more of um, technical resources as examples of this, if you go to Tim Urban's website, Wait But Why, he's got some fantastic visual essays on different perspective taking. And he's got histo histomaps. That's a really good one, actually. A histomap is like the evolution of societies and their on their power and it's all in a visual map and it gives you a sense of evolution and context across millennia of how um, empires have grown and faded and what this does for us is that it helps us see our experience in a broader context which helps us to well it can either make us feel empowered or disempowered depends on our attitude but it helps us see that there are patterns in things and that the decisions we make now can feed into some of these patterns or can trigger a different set of patterns. So the ability to do that is really important. Uh, a couple other resources to help develop your perspective. One is called The Overview Effect. It's a book by one of the astronauts that went into space. I've forgotten who the author is, I'm afraid. Um, the other one is The Orbital, Orbital Perspective by Ron Guerin. And he's got a couple of TED, TEDx talks if you want to check him out. The orbital perspective captures the massive change in perspective that happens to many astronauts when they go into space and see for the first time the planet Earth from a distance. And they see this little blue dot hanging in this huge oasis, blankness of space. And they realize how tiny it is, how fragile it is, how miraculous it is. There is so much diversity of of life on this planet. And it's, there's just a small envelope of atmosphere keeping it all going. And what happens to a lot of astronauts as they sit gazing from space down at the planet is the sense of borders disappear, the sense of boundaries disappear. He realized, we realize that coming back onto the planet is that the whole world is our world. And this is the kind of perspective we need to have in the future of leadership. We need to imagine that the whole world is our world. And some political leaders are leading from that point of view, and some are not. And what we need is from our businesses to our political leaders, to our economic, to our scientists to think about this. We are all in this together. The good news is that it's happening already in some places. This pandemic is actually showing a cooperation pandemic, which I heard this expression from Stephen Kotler today. Um, he's co-written a number of different books, including Abundance uh, with Peter Diamandis. And their latest book, which is The Future is Faster Than You Think, I think is what it's called. He talks about this, this exponential rate of everything is, uh, we need to be navigating that territory. But he talked about this pandemic of cooperation. And with this pandemic, there's over 40 organizations around the world sharing notes and ideas about a, um, a vaccine for the virus. And there's businesses cooperating around the world about 3D printing of masks, 3D printing of uh, ventilator equipment. So there's this massive cooperation happening around the globe to help find solutions to our global problem. And there's, if there's any gift in the situation in which we find ourselves is that this pandemic is forcing us to experience a model of cooperation that unifies us through this, through this whole devastation. Even the world wars from previous times, at the early part of the 20th century, 
they were quite extensive, but they didn't affect every single human on the planet. And this virus is going across all countries. There's no borders, no barriers with it. So it is reinforcing our common humanity. And that is, I think, the one, one of the tiny little slivers of, of good news that we've got in here. So question for you, you might want to take a note on this, is how do you practice expanding your perspective? Because it's very easy to stay very con concerned with what's happening for me and my world right now. So how do you do the practice of zooming out? So that's the question for you. Now, the next skill is zooming in. <laughs> so it's expand your perspective and then it's discernment, which is how do you make uh, decisions? And that's the other critical pull that goes across all of that. So that's a reflection piece. How do you expand your perspective and then how do you hone and make decisions right now? And that's a polarity that every leader needs to face. So the other shift you need to make is to choose your role, choose your role. And there are five influencer roles that I want to go through. Just want to check the time. Okay, good, we're good. And there are archetypes. And I use archetypes because archetypes create architecture for action. They are like subconscious blueprints that we're familiar, that the, the role is familiar to us and it represents a subconscious pattern that we can embody and helps us navigate difficult choices. So all that being said, let me just explain what a few of them are. One of the archetypes I think we have a choice to activate right now is the warrior. And when I say warrior, it's not the warrior that goes out to kill people. That's often what comes up in our minds <clears throat> um, about warriors. This warrior archetype is about fighting for goodness, fighting for beauty, fighting for truth, fighting for a better world. That's what the warrior archetype can embody. And that sense of galvanizing our courage is one of the roles that we may choose to activate right now. And certainly a lot of business leaders are thinking about that. How do we rally the troops? How do we rally our courage? How do we keep people focused on the end game? Well, we need to determine what the end game is. And if it's to create a better world, then we're on the altruistic path of the warrior. Now the warrior, each of the archetypes I'm going to share has a shadow side and a tipping point that drags us into the bad version of that. And for the warrior, the shadow version is the bully. So as soon as we stop thinking about how this is good for everyone and we start thinking about how this is good for me and mine, we devolve away from the altruism of, the, of a really good warrior into the bully. So the good side is courage, bad side is bullying. It's very Star Wars. <laughs> the next one you want to consider is the guardian. So the guardian is about protecting what's core and important as well as building for the future. So there's an element of guardian, but we may need to activate as well this time. Uh, so what do we want to take forward in our common humanity that's still valuable? So I'm thinking things like how do we connect? And connection and cooperation are probably some really important practices and values that we can carry forward into this brave new world. And what do we want to let go of? So there's a tension in the Guardian about keeping stuff and progressing forward. And one of its uh, challenges, whoops, its challenges are progress. So because the Guardian is about protecting often, as well as building, it can, it can struggle with innovation. Uh, it can struggle with doing things differently. So when we're activating the guardian, we need to be careful of this tension. What traditions can we take forward in building a new world? And what happens is with the guardian, the danger is, is that we can get blinkered to what we think is most important. So we think, no, we must do this. And as soon as we do that, we are turning into a fanatic. But we need to be mindful of what is holding us back around the guardian, uh, what is gonna tip us from guardian to fanatic. And sometimes this is about status. This is about maintaining our status as a, in the community, in the business sector and so on. So we hang on to something that's outside of ourselves instead of thinking forward about what we're creating. So guardian has some challenges too. Diplomat is another one we absolutely need to activate, particularly in a collaborative society. And the best thing about the diplomat is the stoic nerve. And I think Angela Merkel is such a great example of this, of being a world diplomat. And the strengths of the diplomat 
are in negotiation. When the diplomat gets hooked up on their own conviction, oh, I got this backwards actually. So yeah, rewind a little bit. So the guardian, what happens with the guardian, it's not about status, sorry, for them it's conviction. That's the blinkered view that can turn us into fanatic. It's the diplomat that has is status, uh, focusing on their own status that can go from negotiation to manipulation because winning for the di diplomat in the shadow is all about winning against others instead of winning for the group. All right. The fourth one is the pioneer. And absolutely in a week, in a couple of weeks, couple of months, we're gonna, act, we're gonna need to activate the pioneer archetype. The pioneer archetype is about, let's go to Brave New World, let's find a way, let's invent stuff, let's create stuff. And I think at the, at the moment, the world doesn't necessarily have a lot of energy for the pioneer, unless it's to solve immediate problems. And yet, I think this is one of the ones that we're gonna, absolutely gonna need to, to activate that ability to take risks and so on. Now the shadow side of the pioneer is when we take too many risks and we get addicted to the risk taking itself and we become a gambler. So that's the danger of that. So innovation is the hallmark and benefit of the pioneer and gambling, <laughs> taking unwarranted, unmitigated, unqualified risks is the other piece. Hello, Paul, nice to meet, see you and meet you. And the fifth archetype, which actually filters across all of these is the elder. And for the future of leadership, this is the one that we absolutely need to live into. The elder, and it's got different connotations across different societies. The elder is about balancing the best of the heart and the best of the head. They operate through wisdom and compassion. So the zooming in, zooming out is one of the wisdom capacities of the elders. And that's about having really extended perspective as well as being able to make discerning uh, calls. Balancing that with compassion is the other key piece, so that when we make decisions, it's about caring for as many people as possible, our ambitions are for as many people as possible for the best outcome of everywhere. Okay, so those are the five archetypes that are gonna be essential for the future of leadership. What I'd love to hear from you in the chat box is, which archetype you is resonating for you the most and which one do you feel that you most need to activate for yourself uh, in your current in the current moment. Um, I've already said pioneer and elder, absolutely the ones that we're going to all going to need to activate in a couple of months. Which ones are, are working for you right now, or which ones do you feel like you need to hone? So just jot a note into the chat box for me there. That would be terrific. Okay, guardian, yeah. I think the guardian, the guardian, yeah. It's like, what do we need to protect right now? We're, we need to batten down the hatches and to preserve what we can. We don't wanna throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I think this is an important thing to remember when we're looking at guardian, um, is that we want to keep all as much of the good stuff as possible. We don't have to just scrap it all. Uh, it's interesting though, um, and we need to balance each of these, each of these archetypes is kind of a counterpoint to each other. I remember when I first started working at Outward Bound, I was on the executive and uh, I, it was a mess. Like some of the stuff we were working with was, was really challenging. And I was like, let's just wipe the table clean, like just start over. And um, the board, <laughs> though they like my enthusiasm and pioneering attitude, were like, we don't need to throw everything out right now. Um, so there is a counterpoint. I think we need to take what's good as well as create what's new. And a clean slate is not necessarily the, everything that we need to, to work on. Okay, guardian is what everybody's sort of resonating with. I think you can consider activating the warrior at some point because uh, people are going to want the energy of certainty, the energy of courage from our leaders uh, in the next few weeks. And so I don't think we need to be unilaterally focused on fighting it's it's unilaterally focused on creating something and fighting for what's right fighting for what's good and fighting for beauty truth and goodness is something that's worth fighting for that's elevating and inspiring so i'd encourage you to have a think about that 
as you're looking into which archetype to activate uh, in your leadership journey. Okay, so we're going to move to the next critical shift, which is amplify something worthwhile. So if I'm advocating for us to be amplifiers, what are you actually amplifying? And there's three things that you can amplify. Message, motivation, and mojo. I think for the future of leadership, we need to really be thinking about what is the message that we want to take to our people. And what message do we want to back our back our values with what do we what do we want to stand for i think that's a really critical important piece so once we've battened down the hatches and stabilized things as much as possible the question of what are we making a stand for is going to lead us into the warrior and the pioneer stage as well and the message is going to be super important so i'm standing here saying i'm advocating for a change in the world that that has at its core essence goodness beauty and truth has as at its core essence an expanded perspective that is global so the orbital perspective is one of the things i'm advocating making a stand for i'm making a stand for compassion how do we create businesses and communities and a society that looks after everyone because not only is it the right thing to do it's a survival thing to do uh, it's important that if we're going to survive as a species that we look after our vulnerable as well as our creative energy so that's the message. And what is your message that you're honing? If you haven't done that work yet, uh, give yourself permission over the next month or two to start percolating around that. Have conversations around that with people. It's like, what is it that we're going to make a stand for here? What's going to be our message to the world as we go through our chrysalis and converge on the other side? The other thing we want to amplify is motivation. What's our motivation? And it's directly linked to message. How are we going to get other people to come and play with us? How are we going to get other people to step into their, their greatness? These are all core leadership essentials. Um, and the third one is mojo. And it's a silly word, but it's kind of a good one too. Amplifying your mojo is going to be so important in the future of leadership because how we show up as leaders has a huge ripple effect. How we see is who we be. So changing our perspective so that we have as big a perspective as possible is going to affect who we be, how we show up as a leader, how, what we stand for. And our mojo is the energy that we bring to the table. And people will listen far less to our words than they will, they feel our energy. So preserving and managing our energy is going to be one of the hallmarks and keystones, cornerstones, focuses for the future of leadership. It's always been the case, and I think it's even more so now going through a pandemic crisis. So all the, all the basics that you already know about, meditation, mindfulness, uh, breathing exercises, exercise, fresh air, something that inspires you and looks after you is, gonna, is always going to be a central piece of leadership moving forward. Okay. I love this from John C. Maxwell, people buy into the leader before they buy into the vision. So all the work that you need to do is often starting with you from the inside out. So let's look at the skills you need to develop for the skills, for the, for the now future, I decided, I think it, it should be called because the future of leadership, well, it's here now. So it's really the skills you need now, which is creating the future. Uh, the horizontal axis of this model is always the balance between team and task. Every leader, all time, is always balancing that dynamic, team and task. And the other axis, the vertical axis, is balancing the leadership of now, what's happening right now, and what's happening next, which is what I've been talking about on this, on this webcast, actually. It's like, how do you look after your team and yourself and your business now? And then how do we then look to what's next? And it's not either or, it's and. And through all of this, the people skills link these. So in leading the team and focusing on now, this is about leading culture. So these are, these are fundamentals. I think the difference for the future of leadership is the context. 20 years ago, we still had to lead culture, but it was very different context. How do we lead culture when people are remote? How do we lead culture when people are sprayed around the globe? How do we lead culture when we, all we have to talk through is this little dot in our computer? There's some challenges around leading culture that are new and emerging. 
And so that is, there's some skills that need to happen around that. Oops, oh, how do I go backwards? Here we go. Um, when we're talking about team and looking at next, it's how we're leading change. This has always been a fundamental of leadership, and yet the context, of course, is different. It's volatile, it's, uh, it's exponential, and there's things that we need to be mindful as we're leading change around that as well. For focusing on, on now and tasks about leading conversations, and these are familiar ones of what performance conversations are you having, uh, what work needs to get done, what is the triage of activities that we need to do. This is a perennial. Again, context is different. And then the, the last one is leading strategy. Nothing new around that, except for, as I say, ad nauseum, is context. So what are the skills that you need? I've spoken to a few of them already for this. Uh, leading strategy, we need to absolutely know environmental scanning, scenario planning, systems thinking, and that kind of stuff. So each of these sections is what we cover in the amplifiers program. So we have a theme each quarter, which looks at each of these topics and contextualize it into current situations. So points of failure, where we can go wrong. In change, we might have no pathfinding skills. In strategy, no innovation skills. In conversation, no influence skills. And in culture, no culture map. And this is often I find that leaders don't have a really good culture uh, system and a map to monitor, manage, and uh, measure what's going on in the culture. So those are all some key components. All right. So your takeaway. So we've covered a lot of grounds, a lot of me been me talking. I'd love to take some of your questions or comments in a minute. Your takeaway so far, three critical shifts you need to make. Expand your perspective, think orbital, choose your role, that's which archetype you can, you can embody, and amplify something worthwhile. Your key skills that you need to develop are to lead culture, lead change, lead strategy, and lead conversations in the current context, which is the Ivuka one that I mentioned. And the last piece is you are not alone. And I think it's wonderful that so many of you made the time and effort to show up on the webcast today and to reach out to other leaders and see what else is going on. Um, because it can feel really, really lonely um, to go, go through this on our own. Um, so on that, let me just see, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Where did you guys go? Come back, here we go. I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms. I'm gonna give you a chance to touch base and introduce each other. Now, not everybody has a camera, that's cool. You should be able to unmute yourselves and you'll have a chance, just a couple minutes to touch base with each other and to share what is the number one concern you've got on your plate right now as leaders. And it's just a opportunity to touch base and introduce yourselves and share that. Okay, so when I tend you into breakout rooms, you're gonna disappear for a little while, uh, for a couple minutes, and then I'll bring you back in. Um, so be prepared, hopefully, to share and talk to each other. Okay. Let's go. All right, here we go. You're going to have to accept going into the room. Here we go. Joining Carolyn. Okay, Chloe didn't join.
Okay. Ding dong. <laughs> oh, make sure that I am unmuted. Am I unmuted? I am unmuted. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Hello. Oh, look, I can see everybody. That's wonderful. Uh, I hope you had, I uh, hopefully that worked for you guys and that you didn't get kicked into cyberspace alone. <laughs> that's one of the risks of this. Um, so I've, I'm going to wrap up. So we, we've gone through a lot. This is a fairly dense piece of material. There was a lot in it. I'm wondering if anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question before I close off. If you do, you can, you can signal me like this. If, is, that, is that a yes, Carolyn? <laughs> okay, no worries. All right, so a couple of things then. Um, the Calendly link, if you do want to book in a 30 minute chat with me, I'm available. I've got, as you can imagine, all my courses were canceled uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I've got space in my diary to talk to folks and I'm here of service uh, to you. If you want to run through what's going on for you and your team, you want some strategies to work through the next couple of months and so on, you're more than welcome to that. Also, I promised everybody a copy of Loyalty, um, my latest book, though actually my latest book is going to the printer in July. Uh, and I'll, in the, in the follow-up notes, I'll send you, <laughs> I know, right? I'm so excited about this book. Um, loyalty, if you want a copy of that, a hard copy or ebook copy. Ebook copy, I'll make sure everybody has. If you want a hard copy in the follow-up email, I'll give you instructions on how to do that. Um, thank you so much for showing up today. I was, was really, really grateful for that, um, that you have the headspace and heart space to do this kind of thinking. Uh, because there is so much going on in the world. Um, so lastly, I just want to wish you, wish you to have a great day. Um, have a great day and look after yourselves. The world needs you. So please don't feel like you're alone in this. Um, the last thing I want to offer to is every Monday, I have Monday Mojo with Zozo. It's a drop-in. <laughs> you can drop in any Monday that you want for an hour at three o'clock and I'll send details for that. And it's a chance like this to have a chat with other people who are going through similar situations and to get a peer into everybody's different living rooms and lives and leadership, share ideas, share a laugh. It's pretty unstructured and informal, but it's an opportunity for you to get a sounding board and a bit of sanity uh, through this crazy situation, as I like to call it. In the meantime, have a great morning and the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>